Come on, pick that wheel up. Yeah, there we go. Hello, dwellers of online activity. It's your favorite garage inhabitant, Sarah, here with another car review. Today, I have the all new 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. For those of you that weren't aware, this is Subaru's new off-road version of the Outback. It's lifted, upgraded suspension, skid plates, and this one has the 2.4 liter turbo in it. This is Subaru's new color for this model called Geyser Blue. It has no metal flake content in it, and it's absolutely gorgeous in person. I love the fact that they have these gold accents everywhere, like the little wilderness badges on the side of the car. The same with the Outback font down here on the side skirt area. And these ring caps on the front bumper. I thought it was funny. It's a butterfly stuck in the headlight. Ooh, that's huge. That's nice. These little LED fog lights on here. And of course it has a steering responsive LED headlights that go cross-eyed when you start the car up. Thanks to some upgraded suspension, the Wilderness Edition sits almost an inch taller than a standard Outback. We'll nerd out on the suspension in detail a little bit once we get it on the lift. But as far as the wheel and tire package goes, these satin black 17 by seven inch wheels have a style to them that reminds me of 90s Imprezas. I absolutely love the look of these wheels. One of my favorites I've seen on a new Subaru yet. They're wrapped in a set of 225-65 17 inch Yokohama Geolander AT tire. That's what's up, all terrain tires on a lifted Outback. And also if you look at the fender flares, they have like this weird, almost looks like a WRC car, the way it's cut like that and then open in the back. This is a nice touch, whoever came up with that design. Braking wise, there's a set of single pot calipers up front with a 12.4 inch rotor. And in the rear, there's another single pot caliper, but with only an 11.8 inch rear rotor. Some more gold doodads up here on the roof. I feel like this color scheme is paying tribute to the original triple nickel Subaru from the early WRC days. I'm feeling this color scheme. Out back, you still have Subaru signature ass beard back bumper and a power lift gate. It's a cargo area only a Dexter could love. You could literally take a garden hose to this thing. Hey, and the seats fold with little levers. It's like a blanket in case you wanna sleep back here. You use this to cover up with. So no one can see your legs, your pale, skinny legs. All right, that's enough of this. I wanna get this thing out in the dirt and have some fun. Since I've already reviewed an Outback in the past, there's a link up above if you guys wanna check out that video. I'm only gonna to touch on the things on the interior that are wilderness specific. That was hard to say, that stand out. Like all the gold accents all throughout here. Have them on the steering wheel, that is so pretty. And the shift knob also as well. And there's gold stitching on the wheel in the boot. And then also on the doors, there's these little wilderness tags that are stitched in there. That's cute, like stitched a tag. I don't know why, but I like it. The trim around the vents and on the doors has this mattified blue gray metallic on it. It's super pretty. Out back here, it's uh, unchanged from your regular Outback. What, come on, it's funny, all right? The seats are water weather resistant, likely also sweat and urine in case you get a little wild out there on the trails. Hopefully there's no pee leaking out. That's kind of gross. And strange but it happens we are humans where am i going with this both rear seats are heated both have their own 2.1 amp charge port and no stupid cigarette lighter outlet back here nice i have to sneeze <laughs> the bolstering you know that's not too bad it really isn't it doesn't have the adjustable slider underneath the back of your thighs but it does come right up to the back of my kneecaps. Yep, they still recline. That's good. That's a soft seat. It's like a little sofa. Okay, that's that. Ooh, butt sweat. I left some ass tears in the back seat back there, but don't worry, they'll wipe right up because that's why. Black fabric headliner. I'm pleased to see that. A little sin roof. That's acceptable. Instead of a giant chunk of glass adding weight up there and ruining your center of gravity that's what most average Subaru buyers care about nowadays. It's not a wireless charge pad, but a penguin 
fits in there. So there's that. The infotainment system is unchanged in here from the other Outback models. So I'm not gonna bother covering it. The only thing that is different in here though is the X mode settings. In the name of science, I'm now going to give this Outback the beans. I'm going to leave it in drive because regardless we put it in manual mode or drive mode, it simulates fake shifts. And that kind of negates the whole purpose of a CVT, keeping you in the peak power band at all times, maximum efficiency, whatever. There is no SI drive to control on the steering wheel. However, you can go into the infotainment system menu. You tap on this little car right here, and then you can disable vehicle dynamic control. It might give me a slight smidgen of advantage on the launch, who knows. Ready? Go. Mm, there's boost. It squeals when it makes boost. And there's fake shift. Back in boost. There we go. It's quick. The fake shift though. That drastically reduces the acceleration. I swear it must add an extra quarter of a second to 60 miles an hour because that shift in there. Pop. 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 Well, that's pretty light. Hello and welcome to Garage Science of Sarah. I want to know what bean counter at Subaru thought it'd be wise to save a couple bucks by ditching the hood struts and giving a cheap little prop rod. Mm -mm. Bring the struts back. Rant over. Anyway, under the head of this 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness is the FA24 direct injected turbo dual overhead cam horizontally opposed four cylinder that produces 260 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 277 pound feet of torque at 2000 to 4800 rpm this engine in particular does have a 94 by 86 millimeter bore and stroke does have a twin scroll turbo and it still employs subaru's active valve control system or avcs and you can see the top mount intercooler on here is a lot wider than the intercooler on the fa20s which is found in the former generation wrx and forester xt it's time for the braking test no one behind me. Ready? Oh, oh, wow. Those are excellent. I wasn't expecting that. The, those brakes worked way better than I thought they were going to. That was, that was up there towards the top of unexpected excellent braking in a car. Hello, I'm back. Now that this thing is on the lift, let's take a look underneath and see what Subaru did to make this thing more off-road worthy. Come on. Oh yeah, someone's had this thing off-road already. Jeez, and they bent one of the mufflers. Check that out. At least it's got real exhaust on here, downturn tips, instead of some fake plastic crap. Yeah, look at this. Look at these nice meaty geolanders on here that are dirty. That's what a Subaru should look like. I'm glad they're going back to their roots. Now, these Outback Wildernesses do have an upgraded suspension over the standard Outback. It sits almost a full inch taller thanks to some different struts and springs on this thing. It does have an aluminum knuckle and upper control arm. The bottom two links are done in stamped steel. You can see that one's been bashed already on a rock a couple times. The rear diff does come with a little bash guard on here. You see it's been put to use already. I like how it's got this little Subaru Genuine part label on it and another heavy duty steel skin plate with some rocks that come with it for free. The only transmission available on these Outbacks is the in-house designed Subaru TR690 high torque continuous variable transmission. Yes, it does have a CVT. The underside of this wilderness really only has the skid plates over the major mechanical portions. You can see the whole center of the car has this underbody plastic and felt covered cladding to keep sound down. That also is a nice sponge for mud to stick to. Additionally, right in front of each rear wheel, there are some more steel skid plates. 
in this area that was probably prone to getting smashed on rocks, I assume. Up front, the McPherson strut style suspension does have an aluminum lower control arm and inner and outer tie rod. The knuckle itself is steel. Don't have to worry about the oil pan on this thing. It's nicely tucked up underneath all kinds of braces and skid plates. It's actually your exhaust manifold right there in front of it. Lastly, up front, there is a, it looks like about a quarter of an inch thick aluminum skid plate. This thing is heavy duty. To kick things off off-road, we're just going to do a little bit of a random rally sesh around here. I don't have any course picked out, so that's safe. I'm going to tap on the little car on the infotainment system, go into my X mode, which has been revised for this wilderness edition. I love that they updated the graphic in the infotainment system to match the wilderness package. And they have snow and dirt, normal and deep snow in mud. There's no snow out here though, so we'll put it in snow and dirt. It's dirt-like out here. And uh, let's just go have some fun. All right. Ooh, there's the power. Yep, this thing definitely likes to change direction off-road, that's for sure. These tires are phenomenal. Wow, this thing is awesome. It let me get a little sideways right there. And let's go this way. Hell yeah, dude. This is dope. It's actually letting me have fun. Yeah. All right, now, one thing I gotta say is this suspension, while it is 9.5 inches of ground clearance, which is 0.2 less than the Ranger Tremor I just reviewed, a mid-size off-road package truck, almost the same ground clearance. The big difference is though, this suspension I can already tell is not designed for high-speed abuse off-road. It's just a lifted outback. It doesn't have the correct kind of valving for this kind of off-roading. But the car itself, if you were to upgrade the suspension on here, you literally could put an aftermarket coilover on this thing and compete in some rallies with it on a local amateur level and probably do fairly decent. Because this thing is nuts, dude. This is a rocket. Holy shit, this thing is <laughs> this thing is fast in the dirt. These tires are a great pair for this thing. The last Subaru I took up this hill failed to climb it. It was the brand new Forester Limited. That gump couldn't do it. I'm gonna try this Outback Wilderness and see if it can redeem Subaru on this hill. This hill is fairly challenging for most vehicles dedicated off-road 4x4 trucks with lockers not so much all right don't fail me out back let's do this it's got it's got 20 degrees of approach i'm gonna go at a reasonably slow pace okay really are you serious? It's a open front and rear diff for you. Try one more time. I'm not going fast because I tell you break stuff. I want to do this at a slower rate. This is definitely doing a lot better than the Forester did. It needs, oh, it's, it's crawling. Come on. It won't do it. It's, it won't do it. I think if I aired down the tires, it would have a better shot at doing this, but I don't air down the tires in any vehicles I review, so that's unfair advantage. Come on, Outback. It, 
It won't do it. It won't do it. Until Subaru puts a proper set of differentials in this thing and a proper transmission, they're not gonna be able to build a proper off-roader. Different hill, similar type of test. This one, I'm trying to give this thing a chance to redeem itself. This is fairly difficult here too, so let's, let's see. Come on out back. You can do this. Come on, pick that wheel up. Yeah, there we go. It did it. Okay. At least it made that. I got some stinky green mud in front of me. It's probably pretty deep. It's full of insects. I really don't want to get stuck. We'll see what this thing can do through some soupy stuff. Put my X mode into deep snow and mud. Ready? Go. Oh, jeez. Whoa! Like nothing. Like nothing. This thing's good in mud. The best way I can describe this car is it's it's just silly. This is a silly car. It's a lifted station wagon with all kinds of off-road cladding on it and gold accents. It's I like the wheels on it. I think those wheels look fire if they were also gold. Might be a little bit too much, but it's fast. It's This is what a Subaru is supposed to be. This is what Subaru started out making is stuff like this. It's not without fault. The CVT's fake shifts I'm not gonna get on Subaru for using CVTs. It is what it is. They're trying to get efficiency and for their average buyer of their product, the transmissions make sense. I would like to see this thing have a mode that you can just have it stay in an intelligent setting like they used to have where it doesn't simulate those shifts and it just, you get the full benefit of having that CVT. Fuel economy wise, it gets what you would expect, a 260 horsepower lifted wagon that weighs 3,900 pounds to achieve. Other than that, I wish it would have had locking front and rear differentials on this thing and a little bit better of a damper on here. Something that's a little bit more tuned for off-roading than what these are. If you guys never seen my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them, starting with the beans core. This is your assessment of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it those beans. And the Outback Wilderness is getting a rating of... This thing is seriously quick for what it is. Butterflies, more butterflies. I completely lost track of what I was saying now. Next is the cookie score. This is assessment of what you get for what you spend on a one to five cookie rating. And this Outback Wilderness is getting a rating of... 4.1 cookie. I think this is great value. It's under $40,000 and it's full of technology and safety features, which let's be honest, that's what most people care about in something like this. The next category is the meatball score as assessment of a vehicle's off-road capabilities at smelling like wads of meat. And <laughs> this Outback is getting a rating of This thing is not a truck by any means. It's decent off-road for a station wagon. It's extremely decent off-road for a station wagon. I feel it's got rally DNA behind it more than it does trophy truck or rock crawler. Lastly though is the penguin score. This is an assessment of how much I personally like a vehicle. And that Outback Wilderness right there is getting a rating of four penguins. Four solid penguins because it's weird and I love weird vehicles. This is what made Subaru great building weird, fast, lifted wagons. And as long as they stick to this recipe, I think they'll be successful. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.